to jump 1,000 cars. Sir, you have a 1,000 cars. I don't think I'd attempt to try this stunt. Or we, we, we owe this horsepower to Uncle Sam. Too so many cars. car. You know, roses would be... Uh... Like, I put my beer belly on it. Yeah. And you can't immediately tell somebody how many cars you have. You'll really give those uppity yuppies something to think about. Stay on the bar. Don't go yeah. off the bar with your Bronco. 1980 Volvo horns, what's right? Me, me. Yeah, I want a man's coolant. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I thought it'd be small. It's for a small car. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's still an automatic transmission. They're never going to be light. It's definitely going to have to crash. Starting off with Brad buying another car. That's the West. <laughs> Internet. You know, is this a Nigerian oil print? Uh, I also wish you drove a tank Camry. Anyways, anyway, that, that's har- a horrible, very horrible podcast content. A very a inside joke. They'd love to be driven hard. Welcome to Auto Off Topic. How are you, Brad? Andrew, I am good. Um, I would like to start this episode by immediately saying that even though it's been another week, I still haven't touched a car. All right. Like not even driven a car? Just like not touched a car at all? I haven't driven a car that's not a Toyota Camry. Oh. So nothing of note. (laughs) There you go. I I put a cover back on a car that blew off in a windstorm. That's... uh, but as exciting as it's gotten, I'm still kind of in a holding pattern here just with everything kind of in chaos with the backyard because of the the garage build project. So the hope is that by sometime next week, I'll be able to move cars around again. So, yeah, no, I have not done anything at all. Also, actually, while we're on the subject of thinking about things we talked about before, I'd also like to take this moment to uh, be the bigger man. And, uh, and and call a truce with the, our friends over at um, another pointless automotive podcast. Uh, they they called us back out again after calling them out for their five thousand dollar car challenge. After we did a ten thousand dollar car oh, challenge, okay. yeah. So just wanted to let them know that uh, it was it was all in it was all in good fun, and uh, we we do appreciate their their podcast, and we we I do admit that it is a, a low-hanging fruit subject, so I'm sure that they had it planned long before our episode was planned, but I'll take their word for it. So, All right. They they are still claiming that um, their seltzer choice is the superior seltzer choice, but we'll just let them think they're right and just enjoy our, our polar in... Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think about them at all, so... Whoa. Oof. <laughs> ouch. 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 Well, listen, listen, they missed a couple weeks recording, so I thought they I thought that we had we got them, but I guess they they came back. So, which is good because I do enjoy listening to them and they're they buy and sell way more cars than us, so they're even crazier than we are. It's uh yeah, it's, I, don't, it's, I don't know. I <laughs> we uh we fall we fall too easily in love, so nothing gets sold. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Speaking of um officially on the market there is a Mercor. So if anybody's interested in a nineteen eighty nine Mercor XR four TI with eighty thousand miles on it and a five speed manual, hit me up. And you too can enjoy uh comedy when you go to the parts store to get parts for it. Yes. Yes. And it will be as sorted as it can be when it sells. Um I say that knowing that you're buying a Mercor and things do go wrong. But uh, I I do need to move it because I'm building a garage and that cash could be better spent on uh, electricity and doors and all those things in the garage. So I'd like to use that to fund some of the garage build if I can. So it will be sold with fresh timing belt and fresh power steering lines because those are what's currently not good in the car, but that'll be taken care of at some point next week. And the timing belt will be done at the same time. And it will be as trouble-free and ready to go as an 89 Mercor XR4Ti can be. So, did it get new tires for Radwood? Uh, it will also have new tires. It did not get new yeah. tires for Radwood. It uh, it went locally on the old tires. They're actually... <laughs> everybody's gonna... I can hear everybody right now making fun of me. But by my standards... 
they're not that old. Yeah. By the world um, standards, I will replace them and put new ones on for the sale. So I think they're a 2009 build uh, stamping on them. So it feels like yesterday, but folks, that was 15 years ago. So these tires should be replaced. Uh, all right, fine. Uh, I have tires from 2014 on the Galat, so 10 years old. So I've had this conversation a million times on the air, off the air, in the Discord, wherever. Tire health is entirely based on the environment in where you live and the environment in which they're stored. So the five-year tire life thing that's kind of like the standard nowadays, I think is too low. I think by 10 years, you should definitely be looking at them and making sure they're still good. And if you're in a place like Phoenix and the tires have been outside in the heat, you're probably beyond the life cycle of the tires. But I think that 10 years is in, in most scenarios for a not driven that much car is not that big a deal. So just keep an eye on them. And, you know, I wouldn't plan a road trip on 10 year old tires, but if you're just using it locally, it's probably not a big deal. So that being said, I will put brand new tires on them or core before it is sold as well. So it'll have, as of next week, hopefully it will have new power steering lines, new timing belt, and new tires. All right. There you go. Yep. So anybody wants one, it's on the market. Reasonable pricing is out there. But contact me for that number because there is a a sliding scale depending on uh, if you're a listener to the show or a Facebook Marketplace customer. Okay. Yeah, I um, I haven't really touched anything. I I drove the Galant, uh, just ran an errand on it with it the other day because I didn't actually use it to go to uh, Team O'Neill. But um, it's weird. There was definitely like, it felt like one of the brakes was hanging up, and it didn't want to roll very easily. And then driving it around town a little bit, now it rolled fine. So, I mean, that, sure that which could one... be if something, yeah. especially in your area, in that in that environment, it's a very damp environment. The garage isn't totally dry, and that's all bare metal inside the the braking system. And if it sits for a while, it hangs up, and you start using it, and it lub- self lubricates itself, right? I guess I was trying to like look at the wheels and see which one was darker, but um, seems to have freed itself up from just being driven. So that's good. You need to get one of those laser temperature sensors and put it on each rotor after a drive. See if one of them is warmer than the others. Yeah. I mean, with the white wheels, it's kind of easy to tell if one's making a lot more dust. This this is true, too. This is true, too. Yeah. But, um, oh, what I did do is I, I got replacement. They call them masks for the Moret headlights, the surrounds. Yeah, but the, the American term would be bezels. Yeah. Um, they're great. I took the ones that I had, which just were pretty rough, and I used some 320 to get them down. They're st- they were still pretty rough. Um, and then I just I had uh, black trim paint, and I just coated them with black trim paint. Yeah. And they look okay. They'll work for now. I can at least drive the car. And um, in the meantime, I'll figure out who I can have paint the other ones. But so it's put back together now, at least. Usable vehicles are better than non-usable vehicles. Yeah, it was my own. Uh, I stepped on the stepped on the rake with that one. It happens once in a while. We've all done it. Mm-hmm. But you start a small project. No. Next thing you know, you have a huge project. Yeah. But that's uh that's pretty much it. I haven't done uh <laughs> done much at all. I mean, all. you went to the Team O'Neill rally, how'd that go? Uh it was pretty easy for me. I was just crewing for our buddy Jordan and uh other buddy Andy. And uh, really all I was doing was watching the dogs. <laughs> Jordan's dog Loki. I mean that's Ralph. that's that's an important an important part of crew when you crew for Jordan's uh team, so yeah. I, I took, follow uh, him on Instagram. He's a ditch hookers rally. I um, or ditch hookers. I don't 
His name is think just ditch search hookers. ditch hookers. It'll come up. Yeah. I, uh, I took just a nap. Um, you know, not much happened. Car was fine. Excellent. Both cars are fine. Well, that's good. That's, that's a, that's a positive result. They Who both finished the entire day. <laughs> Who came in second? Jordan? Yeah. In his class. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. So and Andy's car, that was his second event. Oh no. I think it's like third, fourth, maybe fifth. Oh, okay. But hey, quite it, a few. it made it, it made it the whole day. So that's good. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, Any other it's not... uh, vehicles of note up there? Mm, not really. Just typical Subarus. You know, our old friend Kathy Moody's got her, uh, I think it's a 260Z. 260, yeah. Yeah. Um, which I think she damaged it at a hill climb. And yeah, I think she damaged it at uh, a Scutney, maybe. Yeah, well, they they got donor parts to put it all back together. It's looking, you know, the paint doesn't match, but it's all back together. It's running. So. Yeah, it's a rally car. That's all that matters. As long as it's, it goes in a straight line, and you're happy. Yep. I mean, that's probably the only other like super cool car. Everything else is kind of like pretty typical. Yeah, I know that uh, Jordan is one of the. <laughs> One of the few rear wheel drive 240s that run up there, right? So, possibly the only one right now. Uh, sometimes there's a couple of coupes, but yeah, I think he was one of the only other rear wheel drive cars. Excellent. But it's just, um, you know, it's like it was a nice day. It wasn't raining. And uh, they didn't do Nefer this year. So, that was the, that would have been like this this past weekend basically right. but it was just um yeah that's just uh what they call a gravel trial now so it is it's what like it a is. short firm short short form stage rally yeah because it's just all within the team o'neill school so right sweet yeah i've done literally nothing i went to a cars and coffee that's about it so <laughs> I, I have nothing to add to the automotive lifestyle portion of the podcast. No, it's uh, I don't know. This summer has been like so quiet. I got the only thing that's coming up is um, grid life circuit legends. Yep. Uh, and then at Lime Rock. Grid. Yep. Also so, at Lime Rock. No, Thompson Thompson. Okay. Which. Those both look is. like good events. So, do, 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 do. yeah, they're up, oh, August sixteenth. So, um, sixteenth and seventeenth. That's uh, I will be or... there. That's for Circuit Legends. So I will be there okay. on two weeks from two weeks from now. I will be there on Saturday, definitely. Um, and I'll probably be at Staggered on Saturday as well, which is staggered in like a month Labor though. Day weekend. Yeah. It's not really in a month. Oh yeah, it is in a month. Yep. Yeah, because today's what July thirty first. That's August thirtieth yeah. is the first day of that. So Yeah. It's about a month. I'm kinda bummed. I wanted to go to that this year. Um I was gonna try to get out there, but there's uh two other reasons I have to go back to Massachusetts this year. So one is this coming weekend and then one is in November. So I will not be also going there in August for staggered so maybe next year we are doing or i shouldn't say we there is a similar event to staggered and um the other one you're talking about the grid life that's uh coming here in the fall it's gonna be the same kind of deal where it's a car show track day drift day you know weekend automotive party so I'll be planning to go to that, but that's not, I don't think till September maybe. Um, and the name of it is completely lost on my head right now. So I have to look it up, but I don't know. I'll bring up that later when I figure out when the date is. But it seems to be kind of a thing that a lot of places are starting to host now at racetracks, which is cool because... 
the combo of all those things is is neat to have. It's a it's a whole new kind of festival, I guess. So it's like a music festival for car people. Cool. Well, another exciting episode. Um, Southwest Speed Fest. That's the name of it. Yeah. So it's September 21st and 26th here in Arizona at Podium Club. So uh, it sounds very a, much like a Grid Life clone or knockoff. Or a Podium Club is the name by... of the racetrack, I think. Well, but, Southwest Speed Festival, is that what you said it was? Yeah, yep, Southwest Speed Fest. So Time Attack, Drifting, HPDE, Live Music, Vendors, and a Car Show. So, yep, basically, Grid Life. Grid Life, yep. <laughs> hey, I mean, whatever, the formula works. If you do a different name for it, I mean, it's... I've talked about it before, that's a good way to do a car show. I don't... And that's why Staggered is, too. Yeah, 100%. Like, and and the, the Time Attack on this is actual... It's a global Time Attack, so... They're they're behind it. Cool. Yep. That's worth going to. I, I'm 100 percent going to that. It's it's a uh, friend of a friend is kind of in charge of putting it on, uh, and he asked if we could get some cars together for the the car show portion. So I'll okay. be I'll be going out there in the Cressida. So the That's the easy. hope yeah the hope is to be debuting the the new wheel setup on the Cressida there. Which means I gotta okay. get my, my butt in gear and get the wheels finished. Yeah. Why don't you do that? I, it's on my list. <laughs> yeah. Everything everything on the list is after garage, but I have two months to get it done, so hopefully I can get them done. I don't think the tires and the Cressida would last the drive out there and back now at this point anyway, so it's time to time to make the change. So actually I did drive the Cressida to a cars and coffee this weekend. Um was able to do that pre <laughs> Pre nine a.m., so it wasn't too. I was gonna say it wasn't too hot, but yeah, right hand drive AZ put on a, a an event in the I don't know, it's about twenty five minutes from here, and uh, my uh, Naomi's son Jordan was heading out there with his other right hand drive friends because he has a Toyota High Ace van, and he's like, "Hey, we're going out to this event. You know, it's not just for right hand drive cars, but the right hand drive AZ." car club i guess is the name of the club that was putting it on um so i met them out there and rolled in with a bunch of right-hand drive cars in my left-hand drive car but yeah whatever if it's the aesthetic yeah yeah wrong side exactly that was the license plate he was trying to get for his high ace van but somebody else had it (laughs) it was neat uh, actually leaving there cruising home i was driving home with a a bunch of other toyota sedans on on the freeway so unintentionally when you pulled in and they had like a check-in, what side of the car were they on? It was a Cars and Coffee. There was no check-in. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it was not a car show. Okay. So there's no events here really this time of year that are like full car shows because nobody wants to be out past no. 9.30 in the morning because it gets too hot. So especially in a car, an old car without AC. It did make me think that I should probably get the AC fixed in that car because... I could use it a little bit more if that was the case. And it's complete. All the parts are there. So I don't know if I mentioned it on the air or not, but I did come into a bunch of old R12 recently. So I have a stash of, I don't know, 15 or so of the small R12 cans. Yeah. So I can refill it with R12. But the problem is I don't want to just put R12 in it and then find out that all the O-rings are bad and all of that very expensive vintage R12 just leaks out into the atmosphere and I lose it all. So I have to uh, test it with something else first. So I've been doing some research into alternatives for R12 that I can do that with because the car has not been converted to R134. So if yeah. I can fill it with R12, that would be ideal because it's what it was designed to run on and it will run most efficiently. So... I've been looking into some of the alternatives that you can use. Uh, and one of them is a, co- a product called R12B. I don't know if you've seen this or not. No. Um, it's the problem is, and why you don't see it used whole, you know, much on a bigger scale is because it's flammable. Um, 
So if you had a leak under your car, you're venting a flammable fuel. But if it's not leaking, it's fine. That being said, it's fairly inexpensive and I could use it to find leaks and, you know, make sure it gets purged before I run R12 in the car. But I don't know. It's a whole thing I look into. So. Like, is it flammable? Sure. But so is also fuel, which is in the car. Yeah. So, what if it's inflammable? I, yes. Flam- <laughs> or as George Bush liked to say, it is flammable. <laughs> flammable. Who knew, fl- who knew inflammable meant flammable? Yeah. <laughs> what a country. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a flammable product, but so are a lot of other liquids that are in the car. So I'm not terribly worried about it. Also, when you're talking about like 16 ounces of something, it's not going <laughs> to cause a huge fire probably. I'm not going to run it in the car, but I might use it to test the system. So we'll see what happens. I'm I'm still doing some research. So if you know about that stuff, let me know. <laughs> but R12B is readily available on Amazon. So, and it's completely compatible with R12. Hmm. So, yeah, I, um, I got to look at the AC in the Galant. It's not very cold. But the compressor is kicking on, so there's something in there. But you just it's low. Not really getting cold. Yeah. And the Montero doesn't blow that cold anymore either. So I'm going to check that out. I mean, they're old systems. They probably have O ring leaks or something, right? Yeah, if they don't get used, because uh, that actually does help uh, when it gets used. So, oh, just like anything, when you're using it, the system gets lubricated and seals yeah. get lubricated. And yeah, the same goes for all of the fluids in the car. So it's like the, the Sapporo doesn't leak transmission fluid if you use it, but if you let the thing sit for two or three months at a time, it leaks transmission fluid out of the pan. So it's all part of old car life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fluids need to be cycled through. So, I'm guilty of not doing it because my car sit for too long in between uses sometimes, but hopefully with the new setup with the garage, I'll be able to cycle through the cars a little easier because things won't get as buried or as far behind. So anyway, any automotive news to cover this week, Andrew? We don't have any NASCAR to talk about. So our NASCAR hating listeners, break. yeah, our NASCAR hating listeners should be happy with that. We're not well, going to talk about the Olympics, so you can move on from that. No, there is some automotive the news. Um, yeah. Uh, strangely, uh, this week, <laughs> get three German companies filing for bankruptcy or insolvency, or some, they're all having financial troubles. Is uh, yep. first one interesting for, uh, because I literally just bought a whole setup off of our buddy Bradley. Uh, he was getting rid of it. A Fanatec sim wheel setup. I believe uh, it's some insider trading happening there. He knew, yeah, I think he, I think he, he knew, knew they it. were going under and he's like, I get rid of this thing. <laughs> what sucker will buy this before they go under? But um, yeah, I don't know. It's, um, it's funny. I, I guess like they, you know, sim racing. And that's how, when I first, I bought my, first version of my sim rig which was the logitech g920 i bought it like april 2020 covid or whatever or march i may even bought it in march like early on because it was like well we're not going anywhere i might as well do some driving and everybody was doing like sim leagues so i kind of got into it uh and then i was like you know it worked all right it got the job done um but Bradley was selling the setup for a good price and Fanatec's not cheap stuff. Um, it's not as expensive as you can go, but it's like, well, just like anything, there's always a level that you can't afford, right? Yeah. It's like middle range. Nice. I think. Um, and it's funny. You actually got to try it out before I even bought it. Cause you, when you went to, uh, yeah, about a year before you got it, I played it at yeah. Bradley's house. Yeah. Um, and I maybe I talked about it on the podcast. I remember, but I bought, I had to buy a special wheel to work with the Xbox because apparently all the software to work with the Xbox is in the wheel and not in like 
that's the thing with the Fanatec stuff, you buy everything in pieces, which is a lot like when you get into, we were just talking about it off air, like hobby grade RC stuff versus what you buy at like the toy store, which toy stores don't really exist anymore. When you buy it like Target. <laughs> to- toy um, stores not existing anymore was my first uh, introduction to the private equity firms that are now ruining all the other companies you're talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they ruined Toys R Us too. Um, you you can buy everything in pieces, right? Um, so you can change out components if if they're compatible. You can change out components, which is kind of nice because you're like, all right, if one thing breaks, on see on the one on the one hand, stuff is more a little more expensive. On the other hand, that means that stuff is a separate piece, and that ideally, if it broke or it needed service, you should be able to service it. I would hope. Yeah. Well, the have, the the simplest explanation that everybody probably is familiar with is. This is the difference between a PC and a Mac. Yeah. You know, a, a PC, you have all these different companies that support the Windows operating system, and you can buy from anybody. And the Mac is like, you got to have Apple fix your product. That's all. That's, that's it. Well, that was true like 30 years ago. It's a little less true now, but. Well, I'm a little behind on my Apple technology, I guess, but. Yeah. Since they they're so much popular now, you can. A lot of people fix them. You get a lot of peripherals for Macs now. But all right, fine. I'm wrong, uh, apparently. So anyway, on. Uh, I bought that wheel, followed the instructions, did the firmware upgrade, and then it wouldn't work. And I was like, "What the heck?" And Andrew is famously patient with electronics, so I'm sure he wasn't frustrated at all. No. Uh, and then that's that's the. The worst part is because I write instructions for a living, I make it a point to read instruction manuals. Because one, I appreciate the effort that somebody put into it. And two, there's usually important things in there that if you don't read them, you miss. Uh, And they had this little note about before you use it, plug it in and update the firmware. Okay, so that's what I did. And it didn't work. So I go into Google, uh, you know, crummy Google and avoid the AI answer. And you find the forum posts and yeah, I'm talking about everything that's getting crummy now. Uh, you avoid the forum posts or you get, you avoid that and you get down to the forum posts and people are like, yeah, don't upgrade the firmware. It breaks it. It's not the newest one is not a stable version. You're like, why is that even available for me to download? Right. It's like downloading your phone update on day one. And your phone doesn't work very well. Yeah. It's like, come on. So I'd like, once I figured that out a few days later and backdated it, now it's been working great. So, uh, but I've heard horror stories like our buddy listener, Steve, uh, bought a whole brand new setup for his wife cause she wanted to do sim racing and it's been a nightmare apparently to get it to work right. Um, and their service, when you read about Fantech service has been really horrible for the last like two or three years, I guess, warranty claims take a long time to get parts. It, it apparently I was getting to the point during the pandemic, everybody got into sim racing kind of like Peloton. Everybody wanted Peloton bikes. Uh, this company expanded extremely rapidly because of the pandemic, everybody was buying their stuff and they have apparently over leveraged themselves and have like too much stock and went too much into debt buying supplies and not you know there's also there was a chip shortage right so they didn't have enough chips to build certain things so parts you know making components were delayed and this whole thing so it's like a perfect storm of problems yeah some mismanagement apparently they built a new headquarters with all this newfound success during the pandemic but they overbuilt the size of the you know building probably spent too much money right so now they're like in a huge amount of debt the classic, uh, this money stream will never end. We should yeah. just spend it. Yeah. Instead of just like being a little more careful. I can't really feel bad for him, but it's a little disappointing for the consumer, me, because now I'm worried, like, am I going to be able to get parts for this thing, hopefully? It sounds like they're trying to keep the company going. Uh, it's So Fanatec uh, parent company is Endor AG, which is a German company. And there's some other company involved. Oh, a PC accessory company called Corsair, uh, 
it was apparently trying to buy Endor and was like paying their debt. But then it must be some money play where they're like, we're not going to pay the debt anymore. We'll just let you go into bankruptcy and then they'll buy it for cheaper for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. yeah. And then hopefully because they were trying to restructure Endor was trying to restructure under restructure under like German law and like they couldn't get the plans together or something and couldn't make it work. So you'll be able to buy an Endor steering wheel and just say, is fan tech guts. Yeah. So I don't know. It sounds like it's still going to be around. It's just going to, they have to do some restructuring. It's just kind of funny that like this news came out and then it was either the same day or a few hours later. Yeah. Right. It was like, yeah, this was today. It was all 31st. Today, it? Yeah, it yeah. was all today. Yeah. <laughs> like a few hours later, it was like BBS declared insolvency. Uh, for Which is not entirely time. surprising because it's their fifth time in 20 years <laughs> or 24 years. Yeah. Um, but again, another German company. Weird. But, uh, you know, again, it's like all these venture capital companies they just buy the name, strip stuff for parts not profitable sell it off to some other company and it just kind of goes around and around yeah however I mean, hey, this is this is a much larger version of what happened to me at Barrett jackson yeah however the utopian post about it actually makes some good points it's like why why weren't they just and this brings me to another point that we've complained about before so you've got a company like bbs has a storied history with a lot of really cool wheel designs that they probably still own the rights to. Why don't they remake them? Like, sure. Because like somebody there is not paying attention to what's happening in the automotive space right now. Right. So the biggest thing right now, eighties and nineties cars, and now we're getting into two thousands cars. So why are you not, building wheels that you already made before or re you should be reproducing them in sizes that fit those cars, because you should look at what's being bought and sold used, right? Like I don't even off the top of my head. I'm not sure what a set of BBS RS is going for right now. Like 2,500 bucks and a good fitment for the right car. Right. Yeah. So used now, what if you just could buy brand new ones from BBS? And they like, I'm like sure they so... can make them at a price point for 2,500 or three grand. Yeah. That and they would so... much rather pay and order their specific fitment and, spe- and exactly finish and everything. Because what's happening now is since BBS is not making them, people are making knockoffs. I was going to say, and there is a huge thriving aftermarket of knockoff companies like, you know, your ESMs and your clutch wheels and whatever other companies are out there making BBS style wheels, whatever knockoff brand that came on the Mercore when I bought it, you know, those are knockoff BBSs and they looked like BBSs and they're so close that the center cap from a BBS would work on the wheel and fit the design without issue. And I took them off the car and they weighed 40 something pounds each. So, so yeah, why aren't you making those wheels Mm -hmm. with your name and your quality. And then I guess suing that you should be suing the pants off the copiers, right? (laughs) Sure. Um, I don't know. Especially because mine literally said BBS on them. (laughs) And then maybe that would force, uh, tire companies to make 15 and 16 inch, 17 inch tires again. Right. Sure. Cause I don't see why not, you know, it's kind of silly. It's like, they have all these iconic wheel designs that you could literally just reproduce and people would buy them. Like if I had the option without much effort, they probably have a lot of the, the stamping and the molds and everything else they used to use. I I would really prefer to buy a brand new set of BBRSS, BBS RSs than a set of 30 year old ones. If I Mm -hmm. had the option. Absolutely. Considering the money that people spend to restore them. It's not cheap to restore wheels either. That's, I'm just talking about the wheels in the Crescent a little while ago and looking at, you know, buying replacement wheel lips for three piece wheels is not cheap. Yeah. I, I, I could certainly buy a set of brand new 
you know, eBay old school looking JDM wheels for less than the price of restoring a set of wheels. Yeah. It's crazy. And I don't want like, I'm not talking a wheel that's like vintage inspired that looks off. Just make the same wheel that you made. Yeah. Back then. Yeah. Don't don't pull an Enki and redesign the lip of their Enki 92s. Like, just make the original style. Why not? You are the same company. You're not doing a knockoff. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Krager makes an SS. <laughs> Krager still makes an SS. Still like, make them because, like, that's the thing. Yeah. And they probably they probably print money with that thing. Yeah. How, how many how many sets of American racing torque thrusts have been sold over the years to classic car people? It's the same thing. Exactly. You, know, you can still buy a 15 inch torque thrust and a torque thrust two and, you know, the Halibrand wheel and all these wheels that they just continue to make over and over and over again. People buy them because they're a classic design. I mean, you can make the 19 inch, 20 inch wheels if you want, but how? I mean, really, how many people are buying those? Probably a lot. We're just not in that space. You think so? Oh, yeah, 100%. Well, that's fine. Keep making them, but yeah. make the other ones because you'd also make money on them. A hundred percent. If you go to a an event, like a, a Euro car event, there's tons of new cars with 18, 19, 20-inch BBS wheels on them. All those guys buying Man. RS6 wagons and... You know, people are spending a hundred thousand dollars on an M3. They're going to spend ten grand on a set of BBS wheels without even hey, blinking an eye. I mean, maybe that's maybe they were, that's where they're like, oh well, if we can make, you know, five grand on a set of wheels or whatever it is, ten grand. Yep. Why should we make the other ones? But you know, if you're struggling to make money, maybe you should make the other ones. Yeah. No, I don't see why they don't. <clears throat> well, the other thing they talk about, and you brought it to me earlier in the Autopian article, is that. They make wheels that require adapters now. That's their main business model. And people don't want that. Like most of their wheels from their, they, they come from a, a 5 on 117.5 millimeter bolt pattern, which no car uses. It's called the BBS Unlimited. And you have to buy the appropriate adapter to put them on your car, which in theory, I guess, works. It's an interesting thing, right? But like whenever I'm looking at aftermarket wheels and there's one with multiple bolt patterns, I'm like, that is cheap. You don't buy the one with the multiple bolt patterns. Right. Right? Because you're not your car. You're not a poor, right? So (laughs) I mean I am, but that's why I buy used wheels. But you have standards. (laughs) You have standards. Sure. Um Sure. And it's and, way and listen, we we also are, we've also both run replica wheels in the past on our cars, so I get it. But it is what it is. But I would have bought brand new BBS RSs and not uh, the HREs that are like super old that are on my talon. If I could. possibly, possibly. So I just, I'll still always have a a spot in my heart for the original classic version of a wheel, but. That's fine if you want to if you want to collect them. That's great, but I mean, even think about offering replacement parts for your old ones. Yeah, you know, re- restoration kits. Yeah, if you're making the same wheel, you can sell the lips and you can sell the bolts and all that stuff, center caps yeah. and yeah. As far as like you know, a car that goes to and from cars and coffee and car shows, I'm fine with a. 30, 40 year old restored wheel. But if I was going to do track days, I'd much rather have a, a brand new wheel option. So, but anyway, so that's, um, that's bankruptcy BBS. number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here we are at number three. Uh, all right. So this was, uh, yesterday, the 30th, uh, Recaro, uh, has filed for insolvency. <laughs> another yeah, German another brand, legendary German brand. So again, um, you know, a, a company that's been sold through multiple different holding companies, um, and apparently it's the Recaro Automotive part that is in insolvency. Like, there's different divisions, obviously, that make different seats. Yeah, they make stuff for like um, you know gaming chairs, and they make well seat like office chairs, and they make airplane yeah. 
seats. Like a lot of times you get in a, in a, in a I think the Airbus, I think that has the uh, Recaros usually. Have you, um, some, well, sometimes Recaro makes like bus seats too. Yep. Um, have you watched any, uh, I know we weren't going to really talk about the Olympics, but have you watched any of the Olympic like field sports of like soccer, rugby, any of that stuff? Yeah. Or have you seen any like soccer matches recently? I don't know what it is, but why like the de facto like seat on the sidelines is not like a bench in like Europe. It's like a Recaro seat. Interesting. It's probably not. It might not be a real Recaro, but it's definitely like that shape of like a racing seat. Interesting. I have not noticed. It's like how it's like how gaming chairs quote unquote gaming chairs, like the de facto shape is like a racing Race bucket seat. with yeah. it's weird, right? Well, I mean, they're comfortable and they fit, right? So I guess they look cool, like yeah. aesthetically. But it's just funny to have like a uh like a office chair with office chair wheels, but it has slots for like a harness. Yeah, I never really thought about that. I always assumed that those were marketed towards car people. Was always my assumption, but I guess but they they're are always like now. anytime you see like a video of like some streamer, some random game streamer, that's like they're just that's like de facto like gaming seat. You know, I, I've i never noticed because I don't notice the seat because I'm so used to seeing that seat that it doesn't even stick out to me. But you're right. It is funny that they all have like pass throughs for harnesses <laughs> for your gaming. Seats. But often you'll see like a international like soccer match football and like the benches will be like racing buckets. It's so weird. Yeah. I never, I never noticed. And I, I think it, I've just been numb to it because you see it all the time. Probably, you know, I've been watching yeah. a bunch of, you know, again, talking about the Olympics, but whatever. I've been watching a bunch of rugby games because so it's fast, so good, super interesting game to watch. Now that I kind of understand it more. Yeah. I mean, I've watched a few games. I'm an expert now, actually. So definitely, um, no, I but and, they missed that. And, yeah, <laughs> I'd do so much better than them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I had not noticed that at all. I'll have to watch another game and pay attention, I guess. Uh, and then I was thinking about Ricaro because it's summertime and there's the summertime blockbuster. And in my opinion, the greatest summertime blockbuster movie ever made is Armageddon. Okay. And in that movie, the whatever those things are, the, the vehicles they drive on the meteor. Like, yep. I forget what they call them, but I don't remember either. I, mean, I thought it was so was cool when I watched the movie. Yeah. <laughs> they had Recaro seats in them. Actually, 98. That was 98. Do you remember that they had Recaro seats? I don't remember that. No. I, yeah, I, I, very... I, I have not watched the movie since 1998, Andrew. So. Oh, I don't believe that. It's such a good movie. I haven't. I saw it in the it's theater like, and I haven't seen it since. No, come on. Yes, it is 100% the perfect summer blockbuster. Well, it's summertime. Maybe I'll watch it again now. But yeah, it's it's worth you have to enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> is this you walking back? It's a perfect movie now because it's not that great. <laughs> I, no, it is a really good movie. It's just like it's just like it's like a moment in it's like a moment in time like it's it so perfectly captures what movie making was in 1998 sure i was always Jerry more Brockheimer, of a it's great summer summer blockbuster guy for me i was more of a twister guy okay that's so, also a good 90s movie but yeah but very prominently i thought it was very cool that those vehicles they were driving had Ricardo seats in them I'll, I'll have to go back and watch it and uh, and pick that up because I have not picked that up. But as you said, you know, buses and airplanes and everything has Recaros in it. And I didn't learn until today reading about the insolvency of Recaro that it's a different division that makes the automotive seats that makes the ones in airplanes and buses. Yep. So and that the one that makes automotive seats is owned by a private equity firm that's American who probably doesn't know anything about Recaro seats and their history and does not care. So the, I believe the front seats in the Galant are Recaro made. They are Recaro. Yes. Yeah. They just don't say it on it, but they're Mitsubishi has a long history with Recaro. 
Yep. So. But yeah, so that's uh, three bankruptcies, insolvencies, whatever you want to call it. It sounds like they're term all... they use in in Europe. I was reading about it earlier. Yeah. It's neither of it the... sounds like they'll all restructure and still continue to be around. And if they if they don't, what will happen is the name is such a yeah you know has got such name recognition that it will be reformed somewhere else, even if not. So what was interesting was that according to both articles here, it's the same union for both BBS workers and Recaro workers. That doesn't surprise me, like an aftermarket parts yeah. union. But it would make uh, sense they're in the same union. Apparently neither were notified, so that's kind of shitty, but well, I mean, all of this comes down to the fact that, and this goes probably too deep for this podcast to talk about right now, but there's only so many companies in the world that own all the companies that we know. So yeah. That's, I was watching during the basketball playoffs, you know, they're playing in the ball arena. And I was like, how does a company that makes um, mason jars have enough money to own an arena? And then you look into the ball corporation and you're like, oh, they own everything in the grocery store. <laughs> so they don't just own the company, the, the uh, glass jars. They own everything. Like every bag. Make, like cans. They also make cans. Yeah. All the cans you buy Coca-Cola in and all that stuff all come in ball cans. But but even the can company and the glass jar company is what keeps them afloat. Like They also own all the tinfoil companies and the paper plate companies and their shampoo companies and the toothpaste companies. And it's like, Oh my God, like they own everything. So the list is huge and it just surprises you when you dig I mean, deep into these companies. Our favorite company, Mitsubishi. hundred percent. Fantastic. Fantastic AC units. And 100%. Mediocre cars. Listen, we, we sit here and we talk about all these things and, you know, in our head where we're not anti-capitalist, but we're also like, we're like, we, you know, go little guy, but then we watch NASCAR and we, root for a yeah. guy with a bush sponsor on his hood like oh okay yeah. it's fine <laughs> yeah but Mitsubishi also makes a joint strike fighter so there's that sure <laughs> I don't know it's just it's a it's a funny world we live in and it, it's the the more you the more you dig into it the crazier it gets and maybe you shouldn't dig into it <laughs> so have I told you about the odd off topic shipping division yeah <laughs> exactly free? exactly well, anybody who's ever uh, won anything from any of our contests knows that our shipping division would fail immediately because we never ship anything. So, <laughs> no, we don't. We don't ship door to door. Yeah, <laughs> we just ship port to port. Yeah, yeah. My living room to my dining room, back to the kitchen, and it never goes actually to the mailbox. So, there's somebody right now who's waiting for a package that I have to ship him, and I have not shipped it. Thankfully, he didn't buy it or win it. And I told him I was going to give it to him, and it's just sitting here on my desk. So. Ah, my shipping is not great, but hey, it is what it is. Um, it's funny because I was talking up on the Discord the other day, speaking of a company that's probably owned by other companies that we support as well, um, about joking around about becoming a crazy conspiracy theorist because I was watching a TV show. And it bears mentioning this TV show real quickly. Um, if you have any interest in conspiracy theory tv shows it's interesting um but in the show it's like it was made for auto off topic listeners and hosts because the main character in all the reenactment scenes drives a first generation toyota cressida the actual person who is doing the investigative reporting drives at one point a toyota tercel four-wheel drive from the 80s and while they're driving this tercel around they're drinking polar seltzers <laughs> I was like, man, if, if I don't care about the conspiracy theory stuff at all, but this show is made for me just for the automotive and, and seltzer content. So uh, <clears throat> it's a Netflix show about political conspiracy theories called the octopus murders, but hmm. the, uh, the Cressida and the polar seltzer suck me in. So <laughs> anyway, there you yeah, go. that's uh, interesting automotive news, and it actually affects us. Normally, we don't talk much automotive news because we don't care anything about new cars, but 
this is automotive news that affects old car stuff because Recaro and BBS are huge in the 80s and 90s car world. So I guess Recaro actually has been around since before they were called Recaro in the 60s. They were making Porsche seats. Mm -hmm. Which I did not realize. There were two different names that combined together to become Recaro. So anyway. I finished building another RC truck. I got oh, yeah? the disease. I got the disease when uh, I picked up that little Pajero one twenty fourth scale RC truck, and uh, it got me to thinking that I have a couple of unbuilt RC kits in the closet, and I should probably build them. So I have this one thirty second scale RC truck, which one thirty second scale is pretty small. And yeah, part of the reason I never took it out because I opened it when I first got it and I was like, man, all of these pieces are tiny. Um, well, the pieces are tiny. Well, one thirty second is the size of the snap kits I've been building. Yes. Now take the size of that kit and give it operational suspension diffs and steering. Yeah, that's pretty small because those it's- kits are really simplified. Very small. I don't have very many small small parts at all. It's very small. Um, It took me longer than a normal kit would because of the size. I actually have like jeweler's goggles I had to wear in order to do the small little screws on the on the diff and whatnot Um, because it has functional, you know, not independent suspension because it's two solid axles, but it has you know. It's a four. It's a four link with ball seat sockets and tiny little screws. And um, I would recommend this kit to somebody because it actually went together fairly well. If you can see and handle the small parts, and they do supply you with the small screwdriver and a small Allen wrench to put it together, but you can basically throw those in the trash. They're also one thirty second scale. So yeah. <laughs> You can basically throw those in the trash, and I have actually just a cheap Harbor Freight like precision screwdriver set that has the small Allen head and Torx bits and the tiny little screwdriver pieces, Um, and that was essential for putting it together because using that little handheld, like it was almost like a microscopic version of an IKEA Allen wrench, and having a much more a much more substantial piece to hold on to with a screwdriver handle made it a lot easier um, but I finished the chassis um, it should be all together the rest of the way I don't know I'm going away here so probably not right away but I need to finish the electronics install and then paint and detail the body and it is actually a second gen Montero so where do you get electronics for that size the company makes their own okay. you can buy them directly from the company or there's a whole aftermarket now of micro electronics so you can buy up to a 172nd scale RC truck right now. Hmm. 172nd scale is HO. It's smaller than a Hot Wheels car. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not building that. <laughs> but I bought this a long time ago because it came with a Montero body. So it sucked me in. And I just never, never put it together. So I finally put it together. And I'm going to get it up and running. And then I've been become addicted to it just like anything else uh thanks adhd right um and there's another company now that's making a true 124th scale chassis that does not come with a body but has an adjustable wheelbase so that you can actually use it to fit on any scale plastic 124th scale mall car a rock crawler body or yeah, no, a, crawler? a four, four by four truck yep yeah so I think that will be the next project after this because I have a bunch of 124 scale trucks and I have a 124 scale first gen Mighty Max kit. And I was like, hmm, I could make a, a replica of my new truck that I don't even have yet. So just like anything, you start getting into it and you fall down a rabbit hole. So it's certainly interesting um, because like a lot of, Tamaya is re-releasing a lot of their older stuff, mm-hmm. and it's not very expensive. Nope. 
I think a lot of this has to do with, you know, it's it's the the Radwood effect, right? Because it's things from our youth. Well, that what we were we just talking of. about? Yeah, right? BBS, what BBS should do to Maya is doing. Yeah, they're like, hey, we have all this old stuff that people love. We'll just re-release it. And they yeah. do that every like three to five years. Like they'll just re-release an old kit. Yep. So I'm... I don't even love, like, I, I haven't even driven an RC car much in years, but just, like, the act of building it and putting it together is... It's the... Yeah. Cathartic. I want to put the kit together. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I've been looking at some. I'm like, uh, I don't... I shouldn't, but maybe. Right. Because I just want to put one together. Because they... Tamaya's got a bunch of cool rally cars. I'm like, I don't... I'm like, but maybe I don't need a one-tenth scale one. Maybe I can get one of these, like, one twenty fourth scale ones or... I don't know. Yep. It's interesting. Yep. I'm, I am all in Andrew and, uh, I have this new garage getting built and, uh, I will have a workbench out there that will have plenty of shelves for storage for this stuff. So I'm, uh, I'm fully committed to building a few because I'm a dummy, but whatever. It keeps us uh, entertained as adults now, just like it did as children. And you have an even better excuse because you have a four-year-old. So you can get him excited with RC cars and get him into RC cars and really get the same bug that we had because that's how we got into cars. You know, we didn't, as, as a kid, like cars are neat, but they're kind of, you know, un- unattainable because they're for adults, right? Right. So you have Hot Wheels cars and model cars, but then what I think what really sunk us into cars was RC cars because you could build them and work on them and modify them and and go out and race them and you know we did. <laughs> so which are ironically they were electric. They were. But that's only because we couldn't afford the gas cars because we both knew the gas cars at the time were cooler. <laughs> yeah, but they were still kind of a pain to own. They were a pain. They were more expensive. They were fiddly because it was small carburetor stuff, and they were noisy, so they weren't good for the neighborhood. So the um, electric cars were perfect. Yeah, he was like asking me for like a Power Wheels. I was like, I don't know, kiddo. Yeah, I'd rather get you like an RC car. Yep, it's a lot more useful for longer. Pedal power for things you ride in, and RC car for ever in the future he wants me to buy a pickup truck like just the other day he's like why don't you get a pickup truck i was like i don't want one <laughs> i was like he's like but you need one i was like no yeah. <laughs> that's, i was like that's a lot of people think they need them but they don't they just want them what marketing company is marketing to four-year-olds <laughs> i don't Somebody know somewhere he's just like he just likes pickup trucks yeah he really well, wants it? me to tow a trailer with the montero Okay. I don't know why. He's like obsessed with towing a trailer. Well, for his birthday, you should just go out and rent a U-Haul and just tow it around the neighborhood. <laughs> well, anyway. Anyway. That's an episode, uh, Andrew. Yeah, that's an episode. Um, yeah, here we are. Anyway, um, follow us on Off Topic on Facebook. Out off topic on Instagram and threads. I am Ray Sanger on Instagram and threads. And Brad, where can they find you? They can find me at TSISS350 on Instagram and threads. And uh, they can hit either one of us up anywhere for the link to the Discord and come join the conversation there. Yeah. It's uh it's super fun. We're I don't even know what we're what, yeah, we we're talking about all these bankruptcies today. Uh, we've got, oh, the other thing we've got, uh, I was talking about the Fanatec wheel. We've got an esports team. We run, um, in the EA sports WRC game with, there's another discord that a bunch of us have joined. It's like junior, it's like JWRC, uh, is the discord and they just put on, uh, seasons and we're getting ready for season 15. Whoa. And basically they just do like, yeah, cause they just kind of do them every month or so. And, uh, or they start them every couple months. Um, and basically just do like, 
This one's got three different classes. Uh, and we, all of us that are in it did placements. So depending on how good we are, we're in, some people are in like top level. They, they set it up like actual WRC. So some people are in like WRC one cars and I'm running like the junior J three cars, whatever the hell it is, um, which are like 1600 cars, like front wheel drives. Cause I'm not as fast, which, so it's kind of cool the way they actually split it like real life, uh, rally series so but yeah um but we've got several people who are very fast and then there's me who's just i just pick up uh spots from people who 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 wreck listen i you gotta you gotta finish before you can win so i try to at least finish and i usually pick up people from attrition so it's a, it's a that's it's a solid it's a solid tactic exactly i've been trying to get faster i've been getting faster with this wheel so we'll see it's still valid it's still a good wheel setup yeah you will hang out area out there Yeah, I've been trying to get back into Forza, but the WRC game is like really, really good. So it's like more enjoyable. But anyway, that's a podcast. All right. Keep cars analog and Anthem Roses. 